bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do you this? Say ye that the Lord has need of him. And straight away, he will send him either. Verse 4. Take note of verse 4. And they went their way and found the cult tied by the door without. Underline those words. Door without. In a place where two ways met. Underline two ways met. And they lose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do you lose in the cult? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the cult to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of the, of the trees and strew them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Destined for greatness, but tired. That's what I'm speaking tonight. Somebody said, destined for greatness, but tired. My Bible says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Packaged to infect and affect my generation. You are not... Mr. Nobody, you are not Miss Nobody, you are somebody. Amen. Jeremiah 1 says, before you were conceived, I knew you. Before you were conceived. And before you were delivered, I anointed you a prophet. In other words, before you arrive on planet Earth, before your father ever met with your mother, you existed. Are you following me? You existed. You were packaged to impact your generation. You were predestined. You may have found yourself in America listen, it is written in the book that it should be so. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Destined for greatness, but what? Tied. Destined to get married, but tied. Destined to have babies, but tied. Destined to be CEO of a blue chip company, but tied. Destined to prosper, but tied. So the question we will be dealing in this week, we are going to be looking at what is it that has hindered my greatness? You know, if the Lord opened the book where it was written what you would become and present your age to you and present what should happen at the age you are in, you will break down here tonight and begin to weep. This passage I have just read, we normally read this passage when it is getting close to Easter. And people will carry a palm front, will go into religion. But I'm not talking about religion here tonight. But if you read King James Version of the Bible, you will notice that the, 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 the writer was saying a cult that was a cult is a young horse. 
died, nobody has sat on it. it. In other words, it has not been of any economic benefit to anybody. And Jesus said, lose him. He didn't say lose it. Jesus didn't say lose it and bring it. He said, lose him and bring him. And they went and they saw him. And they lose him. And they brought him. I was tempted to say to the Holy Spirit, it's like you don't understand grammar. And, and the Holy Ghost said, you are the one that don't understand anything. I'm not talking about grammar. And I'm not talking about a horse. I'm talking about a destiny. Anybody hearing me here tonight? Please, you're going to bear with, bear with me. I, I'm a teacher. And if you want me to preach, I can equally preach. But I'm going to lead us step by step. You will never forget this conference in a hurry. Your MM is not born again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was prophesied that Jesus was going to enter Jerusalem in his last trip to Jerusalem. He was going to enter Jerusalem riding on a horse that no man has ever sat upon. And here come, came Jesus with his disciples and they were going to Jerusalem. Approaching Jerusalem, it dawned on him that, hey, there is a prophecy that must be fulfilled before I die. And I speak to somebody here tonight. There is a prophecy over you. You are not going to die until the prophecy is fulfilled. Death will not take you until this prophecy is fulfilled. Jesus turned around to his disciples and said, hey boys, there is something that is important to this journey. There is a horse. I must climb this horse. This horse must carry me to Jerusalem. It is a prophetic horse. Born for this purpose. And the disciples look around and they couldn't find a horse. They say, all right, let's go to Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem was closer. And in Jerusalem, you have the medicured horses, the pedicured ones are there, whichever one, you will find them in Jerusalem. Jesus said, no. Go to the village. Somebody say village. village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, go to the village. The horse assigned to carry me left the family house crossed the family gates and moved out of the gates and got to the junction of two roads and got stuck go lose him and bring him go do what lose him and what bring him i got a little bit confused village village this is jerusalem and this is village and the lord began to speak to me if a man assigned to help you is delayed your destiny will equally be delayed ladies and gentlemen serious issues the horse was delayed the master of the universe was delayed at this point jesus couldn't go further the disciples couldn't go further 12 of them Two were sent to the village. They turned and Jesus got stopped. Waiting for the people that went to the village to bring the horse. Now hear this. In case you're writing anything. There are two most important people in your life. Your helpers and your advertisers. If you miss them, you miss destiny. 
the reason why certain of us are where we are today is because we missed our helpers or our helpers are looking for us and can't find us or we have come in contact with our helpers and we couldn't identify them and they couldn't identify us and they are looking for us they are close to us we are looking for them and you know what you can't go further until help arrives I have discovered by experience one instrument the devil uses to stop a man from going further is the instrumentality of delay. When delay occurs, you arrive late. Did you hear that? When delay occurs, what happened? You arrive late. And life has no provision for your late arrival. That's why in Psalm chapter 90 verse 12, David made one powerful statement. He said, teach us to number our days so we can apply our hearts Unto what? Wisdom. <laughs> Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Go on to verse 13 and 14. Return, O Lord, how long and let it repent thee concerning thy servant. Verse 14. Satisfy us early. Cast three apralas. Early satisfaction is what distinguishes a man. When a young boy of 25 years is early satisfied, men of 50 will salute him. It is not age anymore. It is satisfaction. Why is it so? Life does not wait for you. That's why you got to deal with the power that delays you on the way. The enemy knows because why the enemy does that is because he knows the seasons. He knows that life operates on three seasons. The morning season, the afternoon season, and the night season. I speak practical things. I have never seen demon in the last 31 years. I don't know how they look like, but I know the activities. The enemy I know is the enemy that operates to hinder, to make sure your morning season is wasted. Every one of us here that is 35, 40 years old, still struggling, cannot tell this is where I am going. Cannot explain this is what I have achieved. Cannot tell if I'm relocated from America, I can still survive. Then, you are the one I'm talking to tonight. I'm not going to make you happy tonight if you die that well. I'm not. That's not why I came. I came for a purpose. Why? Because the money season is wasted. Money season is from zero to 30. When you fail to maximize your morning season, you will use your afternoon season to recall to recover your morning season and if care is not taken in the process of trying to recover your morning season your afternoon is gone an afternoon season begins from 31 to 60 i'm about almost 60 years now so my afternoon is almost finished and you know what if i die today i have nothing to regret are you listening to me The frustration of life 
is looking for what we ought to have looked for in the morning season. We are searching for it in the afternoon season. The reason why I'm saying this is because the horse was delayed. The horse was a prophetic horse mandated to carry Jesus. And Jesus arrived. The horse was not there. That is the tactics of the wicked one. He, he makes sure that the person that's supposed to meet you at a particular point in life is not there. Look at my understanding. If a woman is 30 years old and she's not married, the moment she steps into 31, she's late. You know why? I'll tell you why. If you marry at 31, you deliver at 32. When you are 50 years of age, your baby is 18. And at 50, that is the diminishing return of life. When you get to 50, even your internal organs will be telling you we have tried for you. <laughs> I, I, am I saying the truth? At 50, the womb will tell you, look, I've tried. So the womb will stop bleeding. Because I've ever since you were 18, I've been shedding tears. Now I will stop. That is what is called menopause. When you miss your morning season, you need to do extra in your afternoon season. Of course, many of you come, come from Africa. You notice that in Africa and any other part in the world, you go to the farm in the morning. Is that correct? You don't go to the farm in the afternoon. Because in the afternoon, the heat of the sun has come down. You sweat more and accomplish little. If you fail to do enough work in the morning season, in the afternoon season, you sweat more. Yeah, and that is the challenge we are facing. Let's face realities. That's the challenge we are facing. We used our morning season to play Janglova. We, we played games. You know, in our morning season, that's when we get boyfriend, get girlfriend. And if anybody is talking to you, say, leave me. It is my life. Good. That's when you learn how to smoke. I started smoking at age 17. By 18, I was smoking Indian hemp. By 19, I was getting drunk every day. By 20, I was useless. What was he after? He was after to destroy my morning season. Pastor Dada and I met somebody in his church. A man came and he was 75 years of age, never married. So he was crying that Pastor Dada and I should look for a wife. So we decided to get one wife for him. The woman was 60. At least they can manage. <laughs> then the man, the man said, God forbid. And I said, why? What are you looking for? He said, somebody like 25 years. The man has eaten his morning season, eaten his afternoon season, stepped into his evening season, and want to destroy somebody's morning season. Somebody said to fear qua. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one spirit you must attack in this conference when we are talking about the fire on the altar is the spirit of delay. Lift up your right hand. Say, Lord, help me. I am late. Somebody say, Lord, help me. I am running late. If you're a man here, 50 years of age, you have no house of your own, you are late. If you get angry, you can get angry. No apologies. If you are 50 years of age as a man, 
you have no house you can call your own you are late you know why you've been paying rent since you came paid rent in your father's house went to secondary school pay rent in the dormitory went to university pay rent in the hostel and graduated you are still paying rent can't you see you are late I want to steer something up in you because you are the one I'm talking to tonight. You are the destined horse. You are created for greatness. You carry greatness in you and greatness is struggling to explode. Something is holding you back. Child of God, listen. Until you arrive, nobody minds you. Your arrival is what positions you in life. That is what projects you. That's what distinguishes you from everybody. Because you have arrived. But when you check down the family line, you find out nobody has ever arrived. You don't have any reference point. My prayer for you is that the anointing will come upon you to recover every wasted season in your life. <laughs> Jesus said to them, when you get to the village, you will see the horse. The horse has already left the family and the horse has gotten to a point. The horse was at the junction of two roads. Somebody say two roads. What was the horse doing? The horse had become a spectator. And cannot explain why did I stop here? I, I, I'm speaking to somebody here now. Why did I stop here? I'm going to explain to you what happened to this house. Maybe this will make it plain to you. Move. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the picture I want to paint in your heart tonight and I'll let you go. Can you come back? Just come, just come. Now this is where he came from. Destined, this is his destiny. This is where he will arrive and his generation will salute him. This is where all the allocations meant for his destiny, this is where they are kept. And until he gets here, he can have it. This is his focus in life. And he took off, began to come. He took off from the family and he was coming. Coming with anger to possess suddenly. Come, come. Suddenly. He stopped. What stopped him? Where he's coming from. That's my message tonight. Destined for greatness. He, he, can, he can describe what is here. He can describe, he can give you the colors, he can give you their dimension, he can give the details of what it looks like, but he can't possess it. Yet he doesn't know what has stopped him. He thought when he gets to America, everything will be okay. He arrived here and they stopped him. Can I ask you to lift up your hand tonight and say in the name of Jesus, Whatever has stopped me, I stop you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where every one of us, this is where many people are. And Jesus saw it. And Jesus knew that he can release himself. At the junction of two roads, he watches people pass by. 
many multitude of people are at the junction of two roads they see this horse come this way and pass that way another one come from that they celebrate people they rejoice with them they go for their naming ceremony they go for their wedding they go for everything they are celebrating but they have no celebration themselves and they can't explain what is happening to them they are educated they have certificates they have degrees but they cannot enter their portion i cost that power tonight in the name of jesus why destined for greatness but tied now look at the complexity can two of you come One here, one there. Now, there are, these are the other powers assigned to him. The rope is not enough. Your business is to make sure he doesn't go further. So hold this. I begin to pull him back. I begin to pull him back. You begin to struggle to go forward. They will be pulling. Serious, my friend. They, Okay, release him. Release him. Now allow him to go again. He will move, move, stop him. They will stop it. Now, th these ones, they are not going anywhere. But they won't allow him to go anywhere. Monitoring spirits. Monitoring agents. They are not going to succeed in life, they know. But they wouldn't allow you to succeed. So the rope was not. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, when you get there, there are certain people that will say to you, why are you losing this horse? Listen to me. Everyone that is assigned, who has vowed that you will not go further from where you are, as I speak tonight, I terminate the assignments. And this man see where he got to before now they have pulled him back he was destined for this but he cannot access it why there is a rope from the village can i hear somebody say the village, the village. there is a rope from the village that is tying the people in the city they are in the city, but their destiny is kept in the village. That is the message I have brought. That the problem is not America. The problem is not green card or a yellow card and blue one. No. But there are those who have the green card that are still very dry. The problem is where, where you are coming from. Jesus said, go to the village. That the problem of a man is not where he is. It's where he is coming from. And when a man forgets where he is coming from, he will not get to where he is going to. Is anybody listening to me here? Yeah? Jesus said, go to the village. That is where you will release the, the, the horse. When you release the horse, bring the horse. And they went, and when they were losing the horse, these guys were querying and said, why are you losing the horse? They said, the Lord has need of the horse. Ladies and gentlemen, time has come for your life to show light and show your generation that God is your father. Amen. Did I say something to somebody here? They came and they loosed the horse. And they loose the horse. And the horse moved now. Move and carry everything you want to carry there. Go there. Can you see the speed? Can you see the speed? Can you see the speed? So shall it happen to him in the name of Jesus. So shall it happen to you in the name of Jesus. So shall it happen to you in the name of Jesus. So shall it happen to you in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody jump up and shout hallelujah. Take a seat. I will soon release you. Destined for greatness. But tied. What tied your marriage? What has tied your prosperity? What has tied your success? Let me prove it to you. It is not far from your village. The Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The problem we are facing, sir, is because we are looking for the power outside. But the power outside has no authority without the permission of the power within. Jesus could have said, go to the city and get me. But do you know when the horse arrived, nobody asked the question. Why? It's already programmed. They began to decorate the horse. They didn't ask whether the horse was educated, whether the horse has a degree. It was no longer important. When you arrive at the place where it is destined for you to arrive, nobody will ask about your degree. Somebody say, I receive it. Therefore, there is need to detach, disconnect yourself. God help me tonight. Disconnect yourself. I'm going to take time to explain to you these things. Lose yourself. Some of you have gone for deliverance. The question we are asking after deliverance, what is the evidence? And do you know why we are getting the confusion about it? You were ministered to. Things happened. You say, Pastor, if you know what happened that day, the devil was just jumping left and right and left me. Good. Why did you go for deliverance? Ah, Pastor, things were very difficult. We, we, we deal with with the manifestations and not the root causes. You ask people who come for deliverance, is the pressure, the present pressure brings them for deliverance. And they don't pay attention to what led to the pressure. If you remove the branches of a tree, you have not killed the trees. If you pluck the fruits of the tree, you have not also destroyed the trees. There is need to pay attention to issues within the family. Your being born again does not exonerate you from your family, does it? Come on, does it? Forget about the new creation realities. The teaching on the new creation realities. Why, why, why I'm worried is that some of us listen to it and we get confused. But let me tell you the truth. Only the man carrying the load knows the weight of the load. You can't describe the weight of the load. You cannot say that, uh, is it this little thing? The man is dying. You say this little thing, right, go and carry it. Then you know how, how little it is. The man that carries the load knows the weight of the load. What is delaying your helper? Why are you frustrated at this point? Why these secret tears? Because you look at yourself. You look at your age. You look at what you know. You look at the people you know. You look at where you are. You look at the environment you found yourself. And you cannot boast of anything. If they shake you now and say, except you deposit $20,000, $30,000 by tomorrow morning, you will die. You know, some of us will just die. <laughs> we just expire. Because it's not there. Forget about 
we are looking fine. It's not looking fine, we are talking about. We are talking about real issues of life. And the fault is not yours. It's not that you are not making effort. It's not that you are not, you have not, you have tried. But what happened? There is something keeping you. And I want to explain it briefly tonight. This rope is an acquired rope. An inherited, this sorry, an inherited what? Rope. Somebody say inherited rope. Inherited rope from the family. Where it is tied is called the altar. Somebody say the altar. Good. That's where it is tied. What ties the greatness of men from manifesting is the altars and the family. Listen to what I'm going to say here tonight. Until the church understand what spiritual warfare is all about and confront what we should confront and stop beating about the bush, fighting the air, we may not go anywhere. The altar is the basis of all generational problems. No generational problem spiritually can function without the altar. No spirit can operate and suppress and afflict you and torment you outside the altar in your family. The enemy we know, the demonic powers, cannot operate in your life outside your family history and pattern. And what constitutes the family history and pattern is the altar. I repeat myself. No power can stop you outside your family history and pattern. Everything happening to you, you will understand it if you can sit down. The problem we have is that we have failed to sit down to think. Sit down and think. Where am I from? Who are my parents? Who are my parents? Where did my father stop? Where did my mother stop? How come about that my parents' marriage got broken when I was 16? Why did it break? Why did mama marry three times? Why did papa marry seven wives and died without one? Oh, you think those things were coincidence? They are not. There is an adage in my place that says, if a man fails to find out what killed his father, what killed his father will kill him. Whatever apostle you see today happening in marriage, in anybody's marriage, in this house, to solve it, go back to the village. You will understand the marriage patterns. I didn't do anything. We just had a little challenge. The man just pack away, abandoned three children. Why would you not abandon three children with you? Was your father in the house when you were growing up? Was he? No, he was not. He left your mother. Your mother paid your school fees. Now you are paying the school fees of your children. And you don't want to pay attention. You are saying the man is stupid. No. The man is not stupid. Let me make a very strong statement here that you will not like. 
Sir, whoever you marry, you marry the altar from that family. That's your wife, sir. Good. When you said yes to him on the altar, you married him. Don't forget all the authors from his family, inclusive. And you, you collected all the authors from her family. And both of you met, married. Now, these are the complexities we are talking about. We marry, these authors follow us, and we produce children. Who are the children? Are you okay? Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. Who are the children? I was in, I was, I was in, uh, in Belgium and I was ministering on the altar of serpent. And they, it, the church has a gallery like this, but it went, the gallery is like this, like this, and like this. And the young ones sit on the gallery. And I began to minister that night they wanted to fly from the gallery to the inside congregation. I had to stop ministration. The violence was so much. I stopped the, the, the ministration. And I said to the parents, please stay behind after the service. I want to see you and all those children. They were about 20 or so. So I, I made them to sit on the floor. I sat on a chair because I had ministered for four hours before. So, I was tired. I sat down and was talking to them about the altar of serpent. Apparently, all these girls, boys, they have not visited Africa. They were born in Europe. Man of God, for the next three hours, I saw fire on earth. The, the manifestation were so terrible. The parents were confused. And the parents were, we have not taken them to Africa. So where did the serpent come from? The serpent come from the altars. Through the bloodline, there is a transference. Your DNA cannot change because you are born again. Can it change? No. No. You are a part and parcel of your parents. Your parents came from a generation. The reason why you are born again is so that you can be qualified to receive the spirit of God to disconnect yourself. You don't need to carry excess luggage. You don't need this rope to stop you on the way. You must not repeat history. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? The altar. The altar. Somebody say altar. altar. These altars are not, some of them are not seen. They are not visible. They have been destroyed many years ago, but they still exist. An altar is a place of sacrifice an altar is the place where humanity meets with divinity look at this place if god opens your eyes to see the traffic of spirit on this place right now you may not be able to enter here there is a traffic of spirit so altar is the place where spirits are ascending and descending abraham raised an altar many years ago in Genesis. When Jacob was running away, Jacob happened to get close to where Abraham laid the, made the altar. And Jacob saw that that is the gate of heaven. There was spirits ascending and descending. I say, God has been here and I knew it not. So the altars may not be in existence, 
But this is how the altars operate. I'm going to give you two tonight and you go home. I really want you to get serious for me because I am loaded. I'm dangerous. I'm dangerous. Dangerous. This week, I will kill and I will destroy. Somebody holler, amen. amen. Altars. Altars are places where covenants are made. You can't break covenants without dealing with the altars. You cannot revoke curses. Curses are product of altars. Generational curses. They are the product of altars. How do I know altar is operating? When you see certain things operating in the family, it's like everybody is going through the same thing in different degrees. Just know that what is operating is the altar. I worked in the, in the museum for 13 years studying the culture of Africa. And I was the storekeeper of where the relics are. In Nigeria law, what constitutes an antiquity are objects made before 1897. So I was in charge of the antiquities made before 1897. Some of these relics had blood on them. I remember those days, I would be in the, in the store, in the cool of the day, then I would hear, mm. My head will grow big. I will look around. There is nobody in the store. I, and it's only me and those things. And somebody say it doesn't matter. It matters. Are you listening to me? It matters. My study shows a lot of the altars are raised for one purpose or the other. A man gets married. He begins to have female children and he wants male children. He consults the oracle. Oracle is the voice of witchcraft. When he consults the oracle, oracle tells him what to do. When you obey the voice of witchcraft, you are under witchcraft surveillance. And the oracle says, okay, bring, uh, bring white goat, bring black goat and take it to so, so so place and they sacrifice it. And the oracle says, for you to have male children, this sacrifice must go on throughout. So the man that started it died. The second one that come died. Before you know it, nobody will know how it started. Problem with African culture. Tell us who started this thing we are doing. They say, no, this is how we do it. That when you want to, when you want to, to, to name a child, you bring the child and put the child on the ground. Take one old panebited woman who doesn't know where she's coming from. Life has abandoned her on earth. Death refuses to collect her. She comes around and take her leg and say, take my step, take my step. And when we ask, they say, this is how our forefathers left it for us. Who were our forefathers? What did they believe in? I will shock you this week. Are you listening to me? So the, 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 some, they, some made raised altar for their own wealth. Go into such families. Their great grandfather had landed properties. But today in that family nobody has a land. Why? Whatever was positive to them has become negative to the present generation. Let me show you one thing the altars, what they do. Number one. Somebody say number one. number one. Altars determine how far you can go in the family. That's what the altars do. If the altar says, if anybody reach here, you stop here. When you get here, you must stop. You can't go further. That is what stopped that man. The voice of the altar stopped him you don't see the visible you don't see any visible rope it's the voice of the altar because there must have been something in the family that they did that said nobody can cross here now here comes a man born again filled with the spirit of God but an ignoramus 
So he gets here and doesn't know what stopped him by prayer and violent spiritual exercise. One leg enters here and he gets here. Before you know it, another leg enters and he gets here where nobody has entered. He finally arrives where nobody has gotten to in his family. Let me show you why many people collapse. There are three spirits that oppress in the family. The, the, the ruler spirit, the familiar spirit, and witchcraft spirit. As soon as a man arrives where his fathers didn't get to, the ruler spirit sees him and calls for a meeting. The three of them meet. The ruler spirit is the power that controls the family. The familiar spirit is the secretary, the minister of information. Then witchcraft spirit is the executor. Every family has witchcraft. Every family. What you understand by witchcraft is not what I know by witchcraft. Witchcraft is the spirit that executes the order of the family, of the, or the order. Witchcraft is the spirit that executes the order of the altar. It is witchcraft that stopped that man there. Because that is his assignment. Wherever you see witchcraft operating in anybody's life, there is an altar sponsoring the witchcraft. The reason why we fight witchcraft and fight and we don't succeed dealing with witchcraft is because we have not dealt with the altar. Do I have your attention? When the ruler spirit calls, the ruler spirit calls the meeting, the familiar spirit brings the book. And he said, who is this man that is standing here? He said, his name is John. All right, John. John, who is the father? He said, the father is Thomas. Did Thomas get here? He said, no. Thomas didn't get here. He said, no. And John, the son, happened to get here. He said, yes. What about Thomas? Who was his father? Oh, he said, his father was Theophilus. He said, check, check the record. He checked the record. The Theophilus, he said, Theophilus did not even get to the first round. How then did John get here? Familiar spirit said, I don't know. He said, check. Is his name still on the ancestral register? He said, wait, wait, sir. Let me check. He said, yes, sir. His name is still in the ancestral register. He said, okay. Witchcraft, sir. He said, take care of him. The meeting is over. Now, witchcraft has assignment. I'm showing you why some people that had houses seven years ago are now tenants. People that had a company employed people and were paying people salary today are collecting salary. Because they arrived where their fathers have not arrived. Did not care to find out why did my father not get there. Are you, are you sure you are listening to me? And what will witchcraft do? Witchcraft begin to feed John with food in the dream. Because that is one of the weakest, one of the, one of the most powerful agent of witchcraft. As long as they can pass it on to you, they can look at you anywhere you go. And before you know it, John that was here, bubbling, born again, paying his tithe and giving his offering. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. All your tithe, your offering, they are your obligation. But ignorance, ignorance will kill a man, denying him the benefits of tithe and offering. My people are destroyed for lack of what? Not lack of faith, not lack of anointing. Before you know it, certain things start happening. John is here. Before you know it, John has come here. John has come here. They won't stop him where he was. They just move him down. And move him from there, move him again. And just make sure that he doesn't come close anymore. A man that was doing well. The reason why many marriages collapse when you saw them, you were so happy that, hey, I wish when I marry, I would be like this, this couple. The couple you were be believing God to be like before your own wedding, 
they are in court. Why? They entered into this, the realm. I was preaching for Bishop Asare in Takrade. That was a few years back. After the meeting, he met me in the hotel. He was so shocked. He said, do you know in my family, about five of them are pastors. He said, none of us ever went to university. My father's generation never went to university. My father's father's generation, nobody saw the university wall. We have tried. Some of our brothers are abroad, but they can't go to school. He said, but as you were speaking tonight, I now understand. He said, two years back, one of their aunties, the son, gained admission into science and technology in commerce or so. Yes, gained admission. Everybody celebrated. Those in America, those in... The boy was going to go to school as a king. The first person to gain admission in many generations. School resumed on Monday, the boy resumed on Monday and died on Wednesday. Oh yes, that is the power of the altar. If you break a hedge, a serpent will do what? Bite you. He died on Wednesday. When he was telling me the story, he was shivering. He said, I can now understand why the boy died. Because he crossed where nobody has crossed without dealing with what stopped everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You must stop what stopped them. Alter draws the limitation and say you cannot cross. You can't go beyond this. When the altar determines the level of finances everybody in the family should have, that is what they will have. I, I, I think I'm going to stop here. I'll just give you a few minutes to pray. Let me explain something to you tonight. Can I hear somebody say the pilot, the aircraft, the, aircraft. the, airport. the airport? You know, among these three things were mentioned, only one is important. The rest depend on the, 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 that one that is important. Pilot without aircraft is useless. Abi? Hmm? Aircraft without, air, without pilot is also what? Useless. But the airport. Without the airport, the runway, and the control tower, no aircraft can fly. No pilot can fly. You destroy one pilot, another pilot will come. You destroy one aircraft, another aircraft will come. But in a locality where there is one airport, you destroy the airport, no... So, the pilot is the witch the craft the plane is the craft the craft is a satanic system which craft the craft is a satanic system the person that practices the satanic system is a witch so you have the craft the system you have the person practicing it who is the pilot and the airplane. But two of them are useless without the control tower. So the altar is a control tower. Did, 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 did you get that? The altar. So if you want to stop the air, if you want to stop the aircraft, want to stop the pilot from flying, destroy what? The altar. When you destroy the airport, of course, you know that in this environment, no aircraft can land here. There is one airport there. If you see any aircraft, airplane trying to land here, commotion will come to this environment. Calamity will take place. People will die. So when we destroy the altar, 